Special on location episode of Roasting the World. Um, so listen, we do this for the intelligent culture. You know, we we're here to to tell you guys about what's really going on in our community. So we got some special guests here today. I got uh, myself, Keenan Robinson. I'm hosting. Um, we have on my right my brother. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you see this guy, and then on my left, you got my other brother, my brother, my other brother. Uh, go ahead and state your name. Justin Harris, what's happening? Okay, so, so digging, Justin. Digging the sock game. Right, right, right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, Justin. Like, you know, what's up with you? Uh, Justin Harris, uh, QC native, Davenport, Iowa, Wild born and raised. All day, baby. Uh, All three of us are from yes, Iowa. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh. It's black people in Iowa. Cheers to the court. Right. Nah, nah, Absolutely. come on. It's been wild since we were born. It's right. real black people in Iowa. Right. Successful black people in right. Iowa that's really striving to do something for themselves. Right. Please believe that. Right. Uh, currently reside in Charleston, South Carolina. Nashville, Tennessee. You know. The uh, streets. <laughs> so listen, our topic today to be roasted is uh, generational wealth, breaking generational curses, and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I'll start a little bit just so we can kind of get rolling. So for me, just speaking about generational wealth. Um, so every project that I do, I try to put in one of my kids name as one of the executive producers so that that residual income. Uh, when it comes back, if I'm no longer here, even if I'm here, it will go to them. Um, you know, I just purchased my first home recently, and I wanted to build that up so that if something happens, uh, or if not, if I just want to move, like my kids will always have a place. That's something they can rent out and make money if they don't want to live there, but they always have a spot. And I think that's just important uh, to, to start that legacy um, and, and to have, uh, what is it called, uh, health insurance, life insurance, so if something happens, they don't have that full burden on themselves, and, uh, you know, just things of that nature, um, so, Scott, I'm going to start with you, what is your kind of view on not just generational wealth, but also breaking generational curses? Well, one thing I do notice, and I think it's a huge problem when you see Chargers, Challengers, even sometimes Mercedes, Cadillacs outside the project, mm. you know what I'm saying, you've okay. got seven people staying in one place everybody got j's but their kids can't count you know things like that they don't know how to like texting texting is like a whole different language there's some people out there that can't even read right. that i know you know what i'm saying and it's not their fault they feel like their grandparents they're living there so they gotta you know keep i'm, I'm hood you know but to me i believe that if you do something for yourself and things like that, they feel like you're turning your back on your own people because you're doing something successful. Like, say for instance, I know people have kids, I know people have jobs. So it's like with my friends, you know what I'm saying? I know if I don't hear from them, it's not that we don't like each other or I think I'm better or they think they're better. It's because we're trying to build something for ourselves because a lot of people didn't have, you know, structure or someone to help them point in that right direction. But you have some parents that refuse or they had that happen. And you can get that in your mind. I don't want this. To, I don't want to have this in my future. I, I don't want to treat my kids like this. I don't want to do that. Because like uh, a lot of black men or black people have white coat syndrome. Like going to the doctor, getting yourself tested, doing things like that. We feel like. Well, we, we're inadequate. Well, we're passed down that generational curse <clears throat> or that trauma from the Tuskegee experiment or from having someone say, oh, they can take more pain than other people. So yeah. I think some of that is very real. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like, but, but, but to speak about the generational curses, I do think that that's something that we do pass down mm -hmm. and that we, gotta, we do have to break those and to do better because we don't have to live this way. Exactly. And it's I'm, even with, uh, like, Section 8. You can't, the male is not in the house. The black mm. male is not in the house. Right. And one thing I've always known is don't forget that you're a boy. You know, there's a lot of boys out there, a lot of girls out there because they don't have that. They're confused. 
And I think that's a mental disability when a boy thinks he's a girl or a girl thinks she's a boy. You know what I'm saying? It's because they're taking that out. And so what they're doing indirectly is like, we're killing their population because they don't have any children. They don't have something next in their life. So we'll make it seem like it's okay. It's still confusing, you know, when they don't know certain things, you know. Well, Except for October 31st. If you want to dress like a girl, boy, you can do that. Well, I'm going to pivot over to Justin's side and let you have that. Because you come from a different kind of background with a different kind of upbringing. I mean, I think there, there's a lot to, to be said to that story. I think generationally, um, it's breaking the cycle, right? You should want your kids to become a, better than you. Right. And how can you prepare your kids or position them to be able to do that? And I think historically, black people, their kids get to 18 and they're done. Pushing out, yeah. Right. And what I have seen just working in corporate America, other races don't do that. Mm -hmm. And how they prepare their kids and they will nurture their kids and cultivate them to do better things is much different than the black culture. Okay. And I think, when I think about... Um, generational wealth. I think of it in, in a couple of different buckets, right? So, like black people, for example. Tax time comes around. Black people will ball out mm -hmm. for one time of the year. But they will do nothing to position their kids yeah. Yeah. for a future, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll buy a car, go shopping, and by no means am I saying you should not reward yourself, right? right? Mm -hmm. But their priorities are never about positioning their kids to do something better. You're right. Cool. Right? So when I think about breaking the curses, if you're getting $10,000 every year, right. and your priority is not to set up your children or child eight, with a right. college savings eight, account, yeah. right. with a, a savings account in general, yourself a savings yeah. account, like what are you really doing to plan for the future? So generational curses, I think of a, a few different ways. I think of there's an insurance component, and there's just a money management mm -hmm. component, right? Like, mm. How can you prepare yourself for the future? Exactly. And it really helped put things into perspective for me. When I was working with my financial planner, and he's a brother, and as we were going through different plans and looking at stuff, one of the things that he helped me put together for my daughters was a cash value life insurance policy for right. one of them. And literally how this man explained it to me, and he was going through the process, he said, Justin, this is what white people do for their kids all the time. Mm -hmm. They have a life insurance policy for their kids where they're putting money into it every year. It generates equity. Yep. So when your kids get a certain age, mm -hmm. they can take out borrow from money because mm -hmm. they've accumulated equity from that. Right. And I literally started thinking, these are what these rich ass white kids were doing that I saw were really wealthy yeah. and I just had no idea how the fuck right. are they so wealthy? Right. I graduated from college, I ain't had no money to my fucking name. Right. I was very thankful. Athletics helped put me through college, my parents helped push me through college. But when I graduated, my parents were like, okay, you need to figure out how to pay these goddamn bills. <laughs> what do you gotta do? <laughs> yeah, and while my white counterparts, their parents were already these, done. these, yeah. these Individuals are buying three, four hundred thousand dollar houses, getting brand new cars. And I'm like, how the fuck was y'all doing yeah, that yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, like, boom, boom, boom. But as I was seeing, their parents were giving them loans from their cash value life insurance policies, stuff that they had done to create generational wealth yeah. that old we money, are just not money, educated yeah. for mm -hmm. or being told about. I'm like, why the fuck did nobody tell us about this? Right. So something as simple as do the stuff that the white folks are doing. Exactly. Right. I'm doing for my kids now mm -hmm. to help position them to be in a much better position to when they get to that spot. That's just one example right. outside of creating a college savings plan for them. Yeah. Budgeting is mine. That's what I said I'm going to do. Yeah. This, two things I'm going to do this year. Budgeting without living check to check. You know, having to work so, you know, wanting to go to work, get more hours and things like that so I can grow somewhere and things like that and also I'm trying to apologize to people more that's those are my goals and actually mean it you know but other than that it's fine um, I, I do feel that, yeah I do feel like 
we are all kind of products of our our ancestors you know we all hold some type of trauma because we're people of color so we know about the adverse conditions that they dealt with and where we are now and we it's not the same but there's still some things that are the same we still got the police looking at us funny because the what we look like we still got people that may not like us because of where our hair grows out of our head or the way that you know we dress or care you know just different things of that nature um but that's not our problem that's their problem until it becomes our problem Mm -hmm. but what we do have to have control of is our own selves how we react to situations and 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 and, and what we do with our financial pieces because i could have went and bought a new car some rims or whatever but but when you buy land when you buy some stocks and bonds and invest in some you know some businesses and different things of that nature um it just changes the game yeah. you know and, and I think that that's something that we really need to dig into and look into as a culture I think we need to invest more in, in education but when I say education I don't just mean going to college I mean trade school learn how to build something like brick masonry or doing the a hair skill that they you can't know, a take skill that you can't yeah, take because they, they lock a lot of people up yeah. and then my partner get out of jail he started an a- HVAC um, yeah. type of uh, yeah. company my homegirl, you both know her. Everywhere that I've taken her, she's made some money. Right. She gonna do. She. I'm like, yeah, she'll do your hair. Right. And she do some hair making. Boom, boom. Next thing you know, she she growing. Right. You know, in that way, like like a skill. I le- I know landscaping. I know okay. how to make shirts. I know how to do. I know how to hustle as well. You know, people don't have that mentality. One thing I know, when I stay with my friend in the hood, my other homeboy, he was like, look, what you do is you t- get you a pack of smokes. Sell them two for a dollar. Get you a pack of cigars. F- sell them for a dollar. Keep building it up until you can get you an ounce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Flip that. You know, you gotta learn how to, and it, I well, take that mentality you know. and everything that I do. I mean, like, you do have to I'm do that. Flip my money. But, but I'll say this, that's kind of at the, Let's say that's at let's say that's at level one or two, right? Yeah, that, that's what I'm And you I'm take to those to same two. skills, right? And you apply that to businesses. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because and you apply that to, to, to get apply out. that to that to the well. When you apply that to a business, you don't ever have to get out. Exactly. So and, and that and that's what that's what I'm trying to do because I went from you know being in the hood, selling drugs, you're not in robbing. The same place. You're not I know. Stagnant. That's good. exactly. And you have to do that growth. But the thing yeah. is, some of these kids they they see people glorify and our music. I feel like is is stagnated, where you know it glorifies a certain thing, but it doesn't talk about making these businesses or these generational, you know, wealth investments and, you know, buying something and, you know, even buying the hood. Like we got other people in the, in the neighborhood that don't look like us that are setting up businesses and we say ain't no money here, but they yeah. making all this money. Look at all the Arabs. You know, even the Arabs, Arab, Arab, Chinese, yeah. all over and even that. people that's African or, 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 or coming from other places, they coming into these communities that are, don't have any money or take that back. You got people gentrifying the neighborhood right now that used to be the projects. Yeah. That people were scared to walk down the street. Now you got people walking their poodles down the street. Yeah. And they've built these big townhouses and stuff, and it's right by downtown. Mm-hmm. You know, where people were scared to go right there, but now we got the stadium, we got the, everything mm-hmm. striving. Man, they came in there and knocked they all that down. Us, they pushing us push out them, the push city them now. all out. And now those people, you know, got that place where well, we could have done something about that a long time ago if we pulled our resources together. And I think that's part work, of the problem is we don't we do work together, we hate but each other. we we do work together, but not towards things that like that. We work together it's towards like, like it's like you know, you're doing good. I'm happy for you, but as long as you ain't doing better than me, right? Perhaps right. in the barrel mentality. Yeah, you, you had made a comment earlier just about budgeting. Yeah. One of the things I had to learn was managing a budget realistically. Yeah. And what I mean by that is when I graduated from college, the money I was making now in comparison to the money I'm making today, right? And it, it, so find a middle ground, right? Yeah. If I was able to survive and pay my bills mm-hmm. off of the middle, the medium income that I was making, right. doing well, right. didn't feel like I was living money. paycheck yeah. to paycheck. If I'm making 
sixty more thousand dollars today. Right, exactly. I should be saving sixty more thousand dollars. Yeah, that's not how it works. Yeah. People don't inflation the mentality bro. doesn't help. Well at right? the time I was paying three seventy five, four seventy five for rent. Yeah, well but, but what now about, I'm but paying I'm just, over thousand. But I'm just, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just saying in theory, like if you think look at it today, if you if you got another job today that paid you fifty more thousand dollars, People's mentality, and this is not just black people. But people's job. I'm making five hundred dollars extra more. But just people's mentality is, I'm going to spend that as well. Exactly. Nah, you, can't, as, so you have to be a producer you, instead of a consumer. One hundred percent. But you you talk about uh, assets, right? Investing right. in things right. that are going to invest and, and, and accumulate value, right? Right. People make more money and they spend more money, right? Instead of figuring out ways to invest that money that's going to make them more money, right? One of the other things that I learned in terms of investing is you got to play the long-term game. Right. Now, there's the ability to play the short-term game, make some money, take it out. Without a doubt. Nobody seemed to not do that. But I learned this from Angie and Walter. I mean, there you go. This is, was knowledge in terms of my investment account that I've, that I've got, that I have a brokerage managing. They said, if you leave that alone and you don't touch it, in seven years, that money should double. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go up and down because right. that's what the market does. Yeah. Right. But it should double. Then another seven years, that's gonna double. Okay. <laughs> so if you have a hundred grand in there, just in theory, it's gonna be two hundred grand in seven years. Gonna be four hundred grand, grand, and it's going to double eight hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna have one point six million dollars <laughs> if you can leave that money <laughs> alone. Right, right, right. And you, so start with fifty. Start with ten grand. Whatever right. you want to start with. Right. But people don't want to think about playing the long game. Right. They mess around, get ten grand, and they're gonna go put some rims on the car, right. which is going to like, decrease the value. Car, of the car. I pay my car. I get my car fixed up. I had to learn, uh, kind of in a hard way. Well, it wasn't really hard, but I was a little afraid to leave the nest. I was like, I don't know what's going on out there. And when you live with somebody, you gotta look. I got only two hundred. I only got three hundred dollars towards the rent. But when you're on your own, <laughs> when you're on your own, and I'm like, man, you need to make sure. So I, I cut down on my smoking. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get a 3.5 instead of usually I get a quart. You know, I need gas in my car. My job now is two weeks every, you know, instead of oh, every week. So I could just, you know what I'm saying? I got to get food. I got to do things on my own. But it teaches me if you want, you want to keep your shit, you want to keep yourself up at least above water. You're going to have to cut some things short, do things, you know, the right way, you know, because I was like, I wasn't shown how to do a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. So I had to learn, you know what I'm saying? You want to eat, you don't got to let your lights cut off the first time. Well, let me ask like you I this. got my family to help, but I'm like, I'm also trying not to call people and ask. You how know? much further do you think that you would be if you had that knowledge at an earlier age? That's one, and that's be. for everybody. Like if I would have stayed what, in and Iowa. Two, two. Now that you have that information, mm -hmm. what do you do with it to further what it is that, whatever it is that you're trying to do? Yeah, so I, I have two examples. I got two uncles, right? I got an Uncle F and I got an Uncle R. My Uncle F was putting, you know, telling you, you need to do the right thing, get right grades, do this, boom, boom, boom. This one was a little harder. Mm -hmm. He wasn't focusing on longevity or this and things like that because it's like, even in the marketing and things like that, a lot of people feel like I wasn't taught that way. Or you can look at somebody that grew up with money around them versus someone who had who's just getting money now, you know? Because, like, I lived on both sides of the tracks, so I know what it's like to not have nothing, and I know what it's like to live like a king, you know? Yeah, but I think it's, it's a tough... Um for me, I was I was fortunate to see examples of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. And to me, it was about choice. And what I don't right. want to be and what I want to be, yes. Because yeah. when I graduated from college, my youngest was born when I was 23. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated, Dang, my only responsibility now. was me. Right. And then I was like, oh, sh shit, I'm going to have a kid. Right? And then me and my now wife mm -hmm. went our separate ways. So now the disposable income I thought I had wasn't my child exactly. support, <laughs> right? All right. Milk. So oh it was God. tough. So I was literally living paycheck to paycheck, yes. right. which was not fun. 
Right. And that's what I try to exactly. tell my daughter yeah. when I, I had her when I was 20. And I was like, I never got a chance to just be a 20 year old young person yeah, or kid, so to speak. And, and then going to work, work again. Work I'm like, two yeah. jobs and got to take, and then going to court and, you know, all kind of crazy stuff is happening. You know, and I'm like, I just got to jump in there and do it. And I feel like it made me grow up faster. Mm-hmm. You know, Wait, and then I had my own place. But sheltering so, is also, that can that can hinder someone, too. I think it can, too. That's why at yeah. my age, you know what I'm saying, I was like, oh, all I, I know church. I know, I started, I had to self-educate myself. I think myself. the church sometimes can be good, but sometimes it can be, it can be detrimental, yeah, be, too, yeah. because they tell you, oh, because this is what somebody tell me, oh, we're just going to pray. And that's it. But faith without works is dead, man. You got to do Lord something. Put your it. one the foot in front of the other and start digging in that, yeah. in that work. Yeah. Um, so, look, I know we're running a little bit low on time. We have what's called the roaster toast uh, time at the end where we can um, we can roast it and say we don't need to talk about this anymore in our culture, in our community. doesn't matter. Or we can toast it and, um, and say this is something that we need to discuss more. Um, as we go along in our community and these discussions more. I personally, I want to toast this particular subject because I feel like it's something that our community really needs uh, to do more of. And I think it's important that we start having these conversations about how we build community build and how we break generational curses and we continue to grow our community and give our next generation something better than we had. So that's my my uh, toast. To this uh, particular subject of generational curses, breaking them, and building generational wealth. Uh, we Scott, do you want to uh, go ahead and say yours? Do you want to roast or toast this? I'm finna roast. Okay. And the reason why I say roast is because we talk about it and we still do the same thing. These women are encouraging their daughters to have babies so they can get Section 8 instead of putting themselves through school. Um, I also feel like learning a skill or doing something better with yourself, it shouldn't be made fun of, it should be admired. It should be something that you would wanna be. It's time to open up the dam instead of being stagnant. So until we do better, I'm gonna give us as a, uh, a culture an F, because if you look at, I work with a lot of Ethiopians. They go hard. It was so hard for me when I first started, but when they gave me my first tip and I was at the restaurant, I started building my resume and everything like that. And I started getting noticed. So it's just like, some people made fun of me. One of my old managers, I asked for a dollar more. He said he couldn't do it. And it's like, be genuinely happy for someone that's succeeding. Because you don't, you never know. They could recommend you for a job. That's all I got to say. So, no and, toast. And Justin? I, I got to say toast, man. I think the conversation around financial literacy is so incredibly important. Right. It is so much bigger than we think, right? Even if you think of the conversation of insurance, life insurance. Mm-hmm. You insure so many things, your, your homes, your automobiles, your health. Mm-hmm. You've got health insurance, but the fact that you won't get life insurance on yourself, if you were to die today, like That's I think about it, if I were to die today, what kind of position would that put my family in? Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So we just got to be smart about the little things. So mm-hmm. even if you start with just ensuring your life, start there. Right. But then think about how can you invest? Take it the next step further, right? Yep. right. Invest in your children. Build, right. build. Right? right? Yeah. If you can pay, I, I would tell you this. If you can get bundles a couple times a month, you can afford to invest in I hear a lot of talk about these insurance. women but what about us because we yeah. we leave the household as a man as you well know, we right? can say what we want to about women but they're our help meets they're, they bosses and all that stuff but we lead and we lead and wrong in a lot of areas so we can say we want to about section 8 or whatever but that's a way for them to survive because we ain't doing what we need to do because so we, I'll say that men, it's a men if you are lined up to get the J's once a year right you can afford to pay a year's worth of premium for a cash value life insurance policy for one of your children. That's right. One hundred percent. If you got the freshest clothes, mm-hmm. you can afford we do. to pay for your children's future bling, in terms bling, of a five twenty nine B college savings plan. So five twenty nine college savings plan. It is very simple to do that. So right. you got to stop making excuses and mm-hmm. start putting things in action. And this is by no means to say you shouldn't have fun and be fresh. But if the new J's come out once a month, 
skip every other month and start to invest right. in your future. All right, so um, I really appreciate my special guest today. Um, so anything y'all want to plug or anything like that, now's the time. Uh, look for Peacemakers on Tubi, Nothing Without God on all platforms. Uh, look for Peacemakers, the series that's coming out pretty soon, starring Scott Robinson, Keenan Robinson. Um, look for The Frozen Hearts. The Frozen Hearts is coming out here pretty soon also. Um, but as we always say, Stay ready so you don't got to get ready. And stay tuned for another exciting episode of Roasting the World. Peace.